Welcome to the second introductory lesson of the Mystic Healing course. And the course will be given in both Dutch and English, depending on the people participating. Um, what I want to go into in this second um, introductory lesson is the working together with other powers. So you can approach the universe in different ways. You can look upon everything in, from an animistic perspective, or you can look upon the universe as an, from a mechanistic perspective, and both are in a way true. So, just like as a manager, like the people I'm working with, I can see them as other, other people, they all have their own past, and I can try to talk with them, reason with them, relate with them as other people, or I can basically just yeah, be a more scientific manager and say like I have um, a labor force which generates this many hours of labor and this task requires this many hours of um, that specific function and this way I will arrange um, yeah, my management schedule and how tasks should be fulfilled. And in spirituality it is actually completely the same. So I can see the universe as just a large collection of energies which all have different traits, all have different qualities and different quantities in different places. And depending on the energies available and my ability to direct these energies, I can yeah, um, create energies or make energies flow in a certain way. Or, um, and that way I can, in a very mechanistic way, um, yeah, interact with the universe and also in a very mechanistic way interact with my client uh, regarding her as a, like an energetic machine as well as a biological machine and a chemical machine and every machine needs maintenance, needs fuel and in this way I can maintain her but as a mystical healer we want to go more for the animistic perspective so instead of like taking the role that you yourself have to uh, do everything and micromanage everything, we want to allow the consciousness which is there to uh, work together with you. So it is much more about inspiring uh, the person or the powers to, uh, to work with you and to do the right thing. And in working with any, uh, any person, whether they're embodied or not embodied, um, you should realize that, well, however you are going to treat them, what are your expectations are going to be from them, they will interact with you in a similar manner. So if I'm very much about duty or power or bullying, I will attract spirits which yeah, are very similar in nature and they will either cower for me or bully me. And if you act out of love and compassion and the desire of cooperation you also attract spirits of a similar nature so depending on your own personal personal nature your relationships with certain types of spirits will be better or will be worse um, because you're in a way limited by um, yeah by your own personality by your own structure and, but your structure is not um, set in stone. You can grow, you can develop. And by working with yeah, different powers, you're in a way surrounded by a different group of friends who will also uh, guide you, counsel you, support you on a different path. So working as a mystic healer is also a method of um, finding other beings which are already further along on a path you would like to follow yourself. And this is very much also the role of guides, of power animals, of gods and goddesses. They are there to uh, guide other people who have not achieved their level of understanding yet and to work together with them. So eventually they too can become a a guide or a power animal or a god or a goddess in their own right. Also, usually this can take a few incarnations, but if you don't start working on it and you don't yeah, get with the program, you will never get anywhere. And um, 
that's also where we come to shortcuts um, because the spiritual development is very very fair uh, you get what you work for you get what the energy you put in the only difference is when do you put in the energy so you can either pay up front pay cash and say like okay here is the money now give me my spiritual advancement and this is basically done through discipline purity uh, doing spiritual exercises and so, yeah as you progress and put in more work in a way you're also rewarded for the work you do by certain powers in the cosmos who will allow you to uh, more freedom and more power to manifest yourself um, the other way to do it is to use a credit card to say like okay i'm taking all this power now and later on i will yeah find out what i did right or wrong and i'll pay for it but at least i will have the power now and maybe i can generate um, yeah more good karma so i can i will be able to afford it later so it is kind of like a risky investment that you're taking so these are called yeah basically the light path and the dark path dark path is not necessarily evil or harmful to anyone but it is a different method of advancement which is a lot more risky and there are also of course entities which help you to follow the light path and they usually set benchmarks like okay if you've done this or achieved that or then we will allow you to move on to the next level of power <coughs> so they're in a way very much um, a class system where you have to yeah, get good enough grades on your report card to be able to move to the next grade and the dark powers are much more uh, liberal um, they're much more uh, helping us to uh, to take chances to try things out to be experimental in nature um, they're saying to us um, okay why don't you give it a try you would like to know magic or like to have a certain power well here's the power see if you like it and if you like it well make it part of you and if you don't like it well don't so they give us a lot more freedom and if you have enough self-knowledge if you have enough wisdom uh, then you can yeah really accelerate your growth by working with these dark powers but you have to be quite yeah um, able to manage yourself well or, or otherwise you will probably get into negative effects because if the ego is too strong then you're very likely to identify very much with the power you're acquiring and you can see yourself in that role or as a manifestation of that power and then you in a way go spiritually into a dead end but okay i'm digressing a little bit so <clears throat> once you have uh, selected uh, the power or uh, a being to work together with um, you have to also find out what is the is this being not just good for me but is this being also good for the person i'm working with what is their relation so in this case i will work with a spirit group so um, first I will make uh, contact with the spirit group myself and this is basically done through process of relaxation you relax your mind you open yourself up and you decrease your own willpower you allow your own will your own personality to become less strong so that the energy body becomes more fluid and the subtle influences of the spirit are not blocked by your own ego by your own patterns and once you've reached this fluid state you can enter a communication with the spirit group in this case i will first ask the spirit group if they have a good relationship with my client if they're willing to help her Yeah, the spirit group is giving me a feeling that they're quite happy. 
happy, and that they're hopeful that yeah, their clients will be inspiring to, uh, to many people and help people to be more independent, more self-aware. Um, so they feel very inclined to, uh, to help them. This is always the first step you need to take because even though you li may like working with a spirit, the spirit has to be able to also understand the path of your client. So working with uh, a spirit or seemingly also limiting um, because you can only guide people on like a path which is similar to your own. If a person has a very dissimilar path, you cannot counsel them well, you cannot heal them well. Uh, so you need to be aware both of your own path and the path of your client. And yeah, if they don't match, you should tell your client, well, to go to another healer who's a better match or to do a system or method which is a better match. But fortunately here we have a good match. So now I can ask the spirit group from their perspective on my client. What do you think is going on with her? And is there a role which I should play? So again, I go into this meditation. But I try to see my client from their perspective. So the image I'm being given is that it is like, yeah, almost a spherical energy body with some parts which are very bright, but other parts which are kind of murky brown. Um, symbolism is a very important tool for mystical healers or working with higher powers. Um, every tradition has built up their own symbolism. And my own personal preferred symbolism is uh, shamanic. So often uh, white energies indicates creative or destructive energies. Black energies are defensive energies. And brown energies are usually things which are passive, subconscious. So they often indicate talents, uh, which are not being used yet. Um, they can also indicate traumas which have not been dealt with. Um, so it's very much untransformed matter, um, which is still in a passive state. So ultimately what they're showing is there is a lot of potential for growth, for development, for manifestation, but this is mainly on the inside and it is kind of like encrusted by either traumatic experiences or it cannot manifest itself yet because the talents are not developed yet. So now I will try to ask them to give me some more insight on this brown layer which they are showing me. So cross my eyes again. What they're showing me is that basically um, what I'm seeing is like there's this brown layer and I see watery energies, emotional energies coming up and like rebounding in a very aggressive and very negative way back on the person. Um, so somehow the person is harming themselves uh, emotionally. Instead of the emotions um, yeah, going outward in a positive, in a creative manner, in a communicative manner, the emotions are going back inward in a destructive manner. And yeah, from what I can judge, it is probably not due to, uh, yeah, not just not yeah, awakening a talent but rather due to a traumatic experience because, and how I know this is because when I close my eyes, I see the brown, but also black spots. And black, as I yeah, explained, is often the sign of defensive uh, yeah, activities. So somehow she felt hurt by uh, 
yeah, expressing her emotions. And uh, as a result of that pain, she chose, okay, then I will not express my emotions outwardly because this is painful, this is wrong, I've been told not to do that, but I will reflect them back inward. Um, but this is in a way um, a choice, whether, whether to victimize somebody outside of you or to victimize yourself. Um, so this is an um, undesirable situation which uh, I'm being shown. Um, but what it requires, of course, some talking with your client to identify uh, the period or the persons involved with creating the trauma. Um, and for any trauma to be resolved, um, there are very important steps to be taken. So there needs to be forgiveness. You need to be able to forgive yourself for doing that to yourself. You need to forgive the other people for having put you in such a situation or having taught you in one way or deformed you or hurt you. Because while the anger is still there, if you're angry at yourself, if you're angry at the other person, um, you're in a way still in that pattern. You're not seeing yourself outside of the pattern and the anger is in a way an affirmation. Like, I am still a victim, this is why I'm angry. I'm still hurt, this is why I cannot forgive. Or the other person is still pushing me or has harmed me. I'm still this hurt person. And this is why I'm feeling like this, acting like this. So you have to realize that you have another option, that you can choose not to be this hurt person, that you can choose not to be a victim, that you can choose to be free of this programming. And this other, other you, which is free of the programming, which is free of the pain, um, is in a state of acceptance, is in a state of forgiveness. So you need to, in a way to switch yourself from the old hurt um, victim into the new person who is stronger, better, more able to deal um, with things for having experienced things, who has more of a knowledge of what patterns are or are not healthy for them. So, now we need to see if we can help the client to either make this pattern less strong or to move into a different perspective or preferably both. So I will again go to the spirit group to ask them for guidance on yeah, how we can help, how we can support. So what the spirit group is showing you um, is that it's basically uh, largely due to lack of uh, positive example. Um, in your youth you build up patterns. Some patterns you take with you from your previous incarnations, um, but most patterns we actually have to build up during our lifetimes because as we know, mankind evolves, culture evolves, language evolves. So with every new incarnation, we have to adapt ourselves. And if we yeah, take too many patterns along, we are stuck in the past. We're stuck in our previous incarnation. And for us to be able to survive with the changing tides of humanity, we cannot allow ourselves to be too structured. So we need to build up a lot of patterns as we grow up in our lives. And here we see that basically she had a desire to, um, yeah, to form a healthy emotional pattern, but there were no healthy emotional patterns available as examples. There were only negative examples available. So the people in her surrounding as she was growing up, as she was developing and building her own emotional patterns, 
did not have healthy patterns, did not know how to express themselves emotionally in a good way, in a safe way, uh, in a positive way. And um, because she could not develop her own or healthy pattern, uh, and you need to have a pattern to have a response or a method of dealing with pressures, she just accepted the patterns which were offered. So the important thing is to realize that she was in a way starved for the, the, yeah, the positive patterns which she was looking for in her youth. And as a result, she, yeah, in a way, took to accepting what was available. It is like a person who has no food, who is then making stone soup. And yeah, you just put a stone in the, in the kettle and try to boil that. And of course, it's not like as nice as mushroom soup or tomato soup, but it is what you have available. And realizing that you've actually put a stone in your stomach and it is not digesting is very important. Because then you can say like, okay, I need to get rid of the stone so that I can actually put in a tomato or a mushroom or something else, which is more nutritious. And this, of course, requires an act of faith. You need to trust that the patterns which you want are now available, that you can now learn them, you can now incorporate them, so that it is safe to let go. And this is where it is very important to have support and help from these spirit groups, because they can provide the right events, they can trigger the right people to come onto your path or to say the right things to you. So this pattern can be built up. So we have to look first, like, can we have good circumstances? Is it possible for her to learn to overcome this pattern now? Or do we need to wait with the healing? Uh, so I ask again of the spirit group, what do you think? Can we work on it? Well, partially is the answer, because building up emotional patterns is relatively slow. Changing your thoughts is quick, changing emotions is slower, changing your personality is slowest. And personality is very much your underlying response mechanisms, your reality filter. How do you experience your own emotions? How do you experience other people's emotions? And this is what we are trying to work on. So we can do a partial healing in this case and it will, we can initiate a process which will take place over several weeks in which she will be helped to let go of her old pattern and to move more into the new pattern. So what we will do now is we will cooperate with the spirit group to create some openings so that this new information can come in and we will kind of plant seeds to help the uh, growth along. So it's a little bit like gardening, you take away the weeds and you yeah, put in some manure and some water and some sunlight so that the plants will grow. <coughs> so first of all we need to yeah, do something about the pattern itself. The pattern exists on many levels, so it is part of the physical body, it is part of the life force, it is part of the astral structure, um, and the more levels we can work on at the same time, the better, um, because if I remove it from one level, it will kind of grow back from the other levels, and I can repeat it, I can remove it on a physical level, on an astral level, again and again and again and slowly but surely the process will be whittled down because the sources of it will yeah, expand themselves in recreating it because ultimately the person is always looking for harmony so the life force wants to be the same as the body and uh, the personality the emotions the astral body want to be the same as the physical body um, so the inner drive for harmony can work in your advantage because it stabilizes you but it can also work in your disadvantage because it slows down any change 
So to allow a person to change, it is important to remove blockages on as many levels as possible. And because we are actually quite limited and we have a quite small area of consciousness working together with another force which can act on other levels of consciousness, it's very beneficial. So I can work on releasing some tensions on the physical level, on the life force level, while the egregore can, uh, the spirit group can work on removing it on karmic levels, on uh, changing um, the aura so that you know, the right people uh, are attracted and the right events are attracted to this person. So I open myself up to become one with the spirit group so that we can act in harmony and that what action I take on the physical level is reflected back on many energetic levels. So what I do now to attune my own light, my own fire energy to her light and fire energy, the desire to grow, the desire to change. And I guide both our fire energy to the blockage. And the need for like black spots, black energy, is always dependent on strength. If you're very strong, you don't need to defend yourself much. But yeah, if you're still a young child, there's a lot of need for defense. Most traumas are actually created by a lack of strength, a lack of readiness, things being too heavy to be processed in a healthy way. But now she's no longer a little helpless girl Now a strong woman, the desire to grow, the healer who is supporting her growth. But in these circumstances, the defenses are not necessary. So she needs to realize that the dangers she was protecting herself from in her youth no longer exist in the current environment. She has to come really into the now instead of reliving the past. Does that happen? Your energy body starts to open up now. Now that the energy body has opened up more, there is still the old expectation. The expectation that if she shows her strength, if she manifests her emotions, she will get hurt or other people will get hurt. And in a way it is true, this is her experience and this is very much also the filter which creates her expectation and out of expectation you create the same thing again. If you expect to get hurt, you will get hurt. So it's very important to break this cycle. To 
looking for positive examples and to focus her on the positive examples, on the other path. And daring to take a chance and allowing things to happen differently. And what I can do now is to share some of my own experiences. How when I open up, I find love and support and acceptance, sympathy. I notice as I'm sending these energies, your body is just confused. It is like, what's this? How to deal with it? It's confusing. It is strange. And there's a tendency to go back to the old pattern. Because the old pattern is survivable. You know how to manage, how to deal with it. Even though it is difficult, or painful, at least you survive. It is often that people choose the known evil for the unknown or the uncertainty and the stress and feeling of insecurity. So there's try to support her. And I hope that the feelings of insecurity will become soft enough that so she can accept the new pattern. But I notice also that the spirit group is working her aura to bring yeah, examples of how things can be different in her life but also in other people's life more forward to strengthen the other paths which she should have taken but was not able to sometimes it's like being in a dark room and trying to find a little crack of light under the door to escape the darkness and some people manage and some people don't and there have been these cracks of light, these people in her environment, and little events where things happened unexpectedly better. But she needs to crawl under the door into the room of light, to follow that little light and make it stronger, to feed it. So she can step into a different lifetime, into a different future. develop herself more fully. Notice the spirit group is now done. So I also finish my treatment. What is very important if you're working with these higher powers is also to help the person to be alert for the help they are receiving, for the signals they are receiving. Because the spirit group has now in a way committed itself to try to help her, to try to inspire the people around her, to work with her in a different way, to interact with her in a different way so she can go into a different flow. So to have a little discussion with her about yeah, recognizing the patterns, having trust, just trying it out, experimenting, and also recognizing that as she experiments, the old fears, the old pains will reawaken. But it's very important not to allow the old pains, your old knowledge, to block you from learning something new block you from even being curious or trying to learn something new. That growth is about being flexible, it's about having trust and it's also about taking risks. Because ultimately the spirit has allies and it is invulnerable, it will continue and if it doesn't learn in this life or doesn't use this opportunity, it will use the next opportunity maybe or a next one. There's always countless opportunities, but you have to look for what opportunity you are given at a certain point in time. Because depending on your circumstances, astrologically, socially, financially, 
there are different things you can learn. And if you try to force yourself into a kind of development which, you're, which is unsupported, it is very hard, very difficult. And by working together with higher guides, you can learn what is the most fruitful area of your spirit to develop at this point in time. Thank you all for joining me for this introductory lesson of the Mystic Healer Education. I hope you will uh, join the course and we will work more on this subject together.